What's up everybody? Yours truly, Jerry Flowers from Redefine TV, and today we are continuing our Closed Doors series. Subtitle for today, Nothing is Working. Have you ever been there where it just seems like nothing is working, no matter how hard you try, no matter how big you believe, nothing will get this door to open. What do I gotta do to get out of this season, to get out of this place? What can I do to get this door to open? Is this a test? And one thing I'm learning that I think a lot of people forget, tests were never meant to be repeated. And like I said before, I could deal with taking tests. I just can't deal with taking the same test. I'm gonna keep going. I could deal with taking tests. I just can't deal with taking the same test over the same subject. I'm gonna keep going. I could deal with taking tests. I just can't deal with taking the same test over the same subject in the same class. I'm gonna keep going. I could deal with taking tests, but I can't deal with taking the same test over the same subject in the same class from the same teacher. I'm gonna go one more again. I could deal with taking tests, but I can't deal with taking the same test over the same subject in the same class from the same teacher and keep making the same grade. After a while, I wanna pass. And if you've ever been there, you just wanna pass. I wanna pass on from this level to the next level. And I wanna give you a few reasons on why perhaps this door could be closed. Number one, could it be this door is closed because it's not your room? Comparison makes it to where you have the inability to perceive your lane. You're trying to do this because they did it. You want a relationship to try to be an antidote for your insecurity issue. You want to try to start this because they started it. You're trying to keep up with the Joneses. You don't even like dressing like this or having your hair like that. You're just doing it because it's what the culture says we should do. You're doing all of this because this is what society labels as beautiful. This is what they label as cool but if we be honest, you really don't like it. Have you ever embraced that which you didn't like, but you did it because it's popular? I remember in high school, I got these magnet earrings, right? My parents would never let me have earrings. And I remember putting these earrings on and I was like, I really don't like the way I look. First, it kind of hurts due to all this magnetic pressure going in my ear. Now, some girls thought it was cute, but I personally didn't like it. And the only reason I did it was because I was trying to be impressive to them. But this wasn't my organic self. This is not what I really like. And sometimes we can be frustrated looking at a door that's closed and the reason it's closed is because this isn't your room. And when you try to get in a room that's not yours, you miss discovering the room that is yours. God does have a room with your name on it. And you're not gonna have to pry open the door, sneak through the window, go down the chimney. When God wants you in that room, ain't nobody can stop you, nobody can bang Bad mouth you, nobody can rebuke you, can't nobody hinder what God is gonna do for your life. Number two, I know we don't like this, maybe it's not your time. Some doors are time sensitive. One of the most beautiful experiences that I ever beheld was my wife carrying my child. And one of the fears that all parents have is the lack of development. Each time we go see that ultrasound, I want to see growth. It went from a splat to looking like something on Alien versus Predator to my beautiful daughter and my beautiful son. And one of the things that we always wanted to see was growth. And I wonder when is the last time you did an ultrasound on your soul to identify, am I growing? Now during both pregnancies, my wife kept saying things like, I can't wait to have this baby, Lord, if you don't get off my sciatic nerve. But we still had like 13 weeks left and it didn't matter the discomfort. Neither of us wanted to go into labor prematurely. Don't let anxiety cause you to give birth to a thing prematurely. Your heart is still in the first trimester of healing. Give it time. Your character is still in the first trimester of becoming. Your gift is still in the second trimester of becoming. Your mindset is still in the first trimester of becoming. Don't rush it. Anytime we can't wait, we're prone to make a mistake and we have to get to a place to identify the season. Identify what God is doing in the womb of your purpose. Identify what trimester you're in so that you won't be banging on the door and really by default what you're saying is, I want to give birth to this in the first trimester and the danger of that is you could risk losing it. I don't wanna have a premature destiny. I don't wanna have a premature relationship. I don't wanna have a premature platform. I want this to be fully developed. Lastly, could it be this door opens to obedience only. It doesn't matter how hard you grind, it doesn't matter how much you believe, if there's a principle that you won't obey. Obedience is the access code which opens the gate. Similar to a gated community, if you don't know the access code, you're gonna be stuck outside the gate. And what a lot of people fail to realize is some doors open 
to obedience only. Let me give you a biblical perspective. Luke chapter 5, so it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them. They were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon, and asked him to put out a little from land. He sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. There's so much to unpack here, but I want you to see a few things. Simon is minding his own business, washing the nets, and he's probably frustrated. And here comes this crowd and this dude just steps off in my boat. So, okay, number one, I didn't catch nothing. Number two, this is bad for my fishing business. Number three, y'all are loud. I'm hungry and I'm tired. Could you just imagine being hungry and tired and someone just steps in your boat? Jesus steps in this boat and asks him to push back a little from shore. Simon doesn't even know who this guy is. He's probably like, okay, this dude's coming with the crowd. <laughs> he steps in my boat. Let me, let me just do what he's asking me to do right now. Jesus was looking for a stage. He got in the boat so that the boat could be pushed back so that the crowds could see him. And many times what we miss is if we're so caught up with being like the crowd, we'll forfeit being the stage. And he turns around after he's finished doing what he wants to do and says, Simon, let down your net for a catch. This is so powerful because God is showing us the principle of first. If you put me first, then I'll help you catch what you were trying to catch. And Simon was like, we toiled all night and caught nothing. Please don't miss this. Lord, we have toiled all night long and have caught nothing. This leads me to believe that him catching nothing was on purpose so that he could be in position for the purpose of Jesus using his boat as a stage. And so God was like, okay, I'm not gonna allow anything to bite tonight because I'm gonna need you in the morning. And could it be the reason nothing is working right now is because right now the king has need of you. So I need you in position so that I could use you to carry out my will. And if you help me carry out my will, my will will turn around and help you carry out your will. Your will is to catch fish, Simon, but my will is to catch souls. And if you allow me to use you to do what I need to do for the glory of myself, then I will allow you to catch what you've been trying to catch. All I'm attempting to articulate is maybe it's not working because God needs you to work somewhere else for him. Maybe the reason it's not working is because God has hired you right now and there's a work that he needs to do in the earth that supersedes what you're trying to do. Maybe it's not nothing is working. He's just not working on the timeline and in the area that we want him to work on. Redefine TV, or redefine relationships righteously.